My name is Craig Weish. I'm with Visible Assets. And the demonstration we're going to do here today is looking at different ways of tagging hand tools. And we're going to look at two different ways. The first is using traditional radio frequency uh, RFID tags. And the second is using Ruby wireless tags. So I have an RFID tag here. And you hear a dinging sound in the background. That's the sound of this paper tag being read by this standard 950 megahertz RFID reader off to my side here. Now, these regular tags can't be placed on metal without completely losing their ability to do reads. So you see here, as I take it off of the metal, it reads fine. But I put it on the surface of the metal, and that's enough to completely block the signal, make it unable uh, to be read. So this is the motivation uh, behind developing specialized Ruby tags that could be embedded uh, into metal hand tools. So we're going to look at that today, as well as modified radio frequency tags that can also be placed on steel. For the first part of the demonstration, we're going to look at RFID tags uh, directly on the surface of the hand tools. You hear the dinging in the background. That's the sound of this reader off to the side here reading the tag that's on this tool. And if you look closely here, you'll notice that this tag uses a 3 millimeter plastic spacer. And that's part of how the tag is manufactured uh, to work in this environment. So you notice that we are getting reads here. Uh, and so for the next part, we're going to look at the performance of this tag once we introduce metal and water uh, into the environment. So we'll start with metal. And if I take this metal sheet here and place it in between the reader and the tag, you'll notice that that stops the signal entirely. Those RF signals are completely blocked. So if I bring it up above the metal, you can hear that we're getting reads. I bring it down below, we're not able to. In fact, you don't need something quite as substantial as this piece of metal. You can also wrap the tool in a regular piece of tin foil, and that's enough to completely block the signal. Back out of the metal, getting reads again. It's also blocked by me if I hold it behind my body. And that's primarily because of the issue that RF signals have with water. For the next part of the demonstration, we're going to look at the effect of water in the environment. So we're going to use this wall of water that I have here in front of me. First, I'm going to put the tool into this plastic bag. This is to make sure that there's no issue with the water directly affecting the circuitry in the tag. So you hear the tag being read, and as I lower it into the water, you hear that the signal is completely blocked. And as I take it back out of the water, you hear that it's being read again. So next we'll look at another hand tool. It has the same sort of RFID tag. You'll notice again the 3 millimeter plastic spacer. Also has some electronics, has a dielectric here in the tag helping it to work in this metal environment. Again, you hear the dings in the background. That's the sound of successful reads from this reader to the tag on the tool. And again, we're going to look at the performance of this in water and metal uh, environments. So I'll take a spray bottle here. And you'll notice that as I spray the tag, as it gets wet, it's stopping its ability to read. I'll grab a towel here and dry it off. And you hear it reading again. Also use the wall of water. And place the tag behind the water. Here we're getting reads. But the signal's blocked by the water. And similarly on the front of the wall. Looking at metal, and if I place just a thin piece of, uh, piece of aluminum foil between the tool and the reader, that's enough to completely block the signal. And as we saw before, I'll also block the signal, so I'm holding the tool here behind my body in the line of sight from the antenna. And as you hear, 
There are no reads. So we're going to look at another example of a metal hand tool using one of these RFID tags that's been specially designed to work in a steel environment. So if I hold the tag here, you can hear that dinging sound in the background. That's the sound of this tag being read by this reader. If I place it on the surface of this wrench, you'll hear still dinging, still able to be read. But if I take the tag and place it in what might be a more logical place to put the tag on this wrench, say in here, where it's a little recessed from the surface, just that small difference is enough to make it not possible to be able to read the tag on this device. So you can see that it's really quite sensitive uh, and needs all of that spacer uh, that's built into the tag uh, in order for it to work. So in this section, we're going to look at Ruby-enabled hand tools. So I have a metal wrench here that has Ruby electronics built directly into it. So that's the first thing to notice here is there's no visible tag you know, sitting away from the surface of the tool. And because the Ruby signals, which are almost entirely magnetic, are unaffected by the presence of metal, we're able to do that. So I'm going to start up this antenna here. And as I do that, you'll hear a dinging sound in the background. That's the sound of a successful read from this antenna, reading the tag in this wrench. Uh, the first thing uh, also that we'll, we'll note here, the Ruby antennas are volumetric, and so it doesn't matter where I am. I can be on either side of the antenna, behind it, in front, going to get a successful read. And so now let's look at the performance of this tool when we introduce metal and water into the environment. So let's do water first. We have the wall of water here, and I'm going to lower the entire tool. Uh, this is a waterproof tag, so I'll lower the entire tool directly into the wall of water. And so you can see here, it's entirely submerged, and the water has no effect on the ability of the antenna to read the tool. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to wrap the tool in tin foil. And again, you hear the dinging sound the sound of successful reads of this tool by the antenna. And I'll lower the package into the water. And as I do, again, still hearing that successful sound. Finally, I'll bring a metal sheet, bring it right up against the wall of water here. And so what you're seeing here are ruby signals that are going through the metal sheet, through the water, through the aluminum foil around the tool, and so reading successfully. So in this part of the demonstration, we're going to look at the performance of Ruby-enabled hand tools when you have a number of them, uh, all in a tool bag, as you might in a normal work setting. So I have a dozen or so Ruby-enabled hand tools here on the table, and I'm going to put them into this tool bag. Each of these tools has the Ruby electronics embedded directly into the tool. And you'll notice that I'm just putting them into the bag without any particular care towards orientation or placement. As we saw, the Ruby signals are completely immune to the presence of metal. So we're going to be able to read all the tools in this tool bag with this Ranger antenna without worrying about whether there happens to be any metal between the tag and a particular tool and the antenna. There's almost guaranteed to be as you look at the way the tools are in this bag. On this laptop screen here, you'll see a software interface that's going to show the success of the reads on the, on the tools. Uh, green is successful read. Red is a missed read. So we'll read all the tools in the bag. I'll take some tools away and bring them back. And we'll see the performance of the system. So as I start up the, ante uh, the antenna here, you hear the dinging sound in the background of the successful reads as this Ruby antenna is reading all the tools here in the tool bag. So now I'll take a couple of the tools out. And as I get out of range of the antenna, you see those red fields showing that the tools are not being read. I'll come back in, put one of the hand tools in, but walk away with the other one. Again, you see the single tool missing. As I come back into range, 
the tool is automatically picked up by the antenna. Now I'm going to take the whole bag. And you see that the whole screen there is showing red, since all the tools are out of range of the antenna. And now as I come back in, as I might do at the end of a shift, and put the bag next to the antenna, you see those all read successfully.